This is Twit. Since Firefox 110, which everyone should have by now, uh, I'm at 111.0.1. But ever since 110, Firefox has provided a new built-in facility for showing third-party DLLs, meaning those not signed by either Mozilla or Microsoft, which have arranged, mm, sometimes by hook or by crook, to have, and I mean crook in that sense, have themselves injected into Firefox's address space. If you're a Firefox user, you can type up in the address bar, type about colon third, you know, T-H-I-R-D hyphen party, P-A-R-T-Y. Hit enter and you'll be looking at this new page. When I did that, I only had three DLLs, all which were signed by Intel. Since I'm running on an Intel NUC machine, that wasn't surprising. By clicking on the little folder icon to the right of each of the DLL's names, Windows Explorer will be opened on that file. And it's then possible to right-click to look further into its properties. I did that, and sure enough, in my case, the three DLLs were Intel graphics drivers signed by Intel. And actually, they were also co-signed by Microsoft, so they probably shipped along with uh, Windows 10 in, in, in that instance. So this is very useful from a security standpoint since injecting DLLs into another process's process space and, and, all, and very usefully into a browser's process space is something that malware likes to do because it allows it to steal things like the passwords that are being entered either by you or your password manager uh, in, into the browser fields and the crypto addresses that you may be uh, copying and pasting in order to send money to various places. But Mozilla's primary motivation, or mo uh, motivation was to help identify misbehaving DLLs that might be causing Firefox to become unstable and to mm -hmm. crash. So in that sense, it was self-defense is really right. what was going on. You know, the, like, like, People were reporting crashes. And so Mozilla said, uh, and I'm sure they initially said, type some bizarre command to, so that you can tell us what DLLs have been injected into the browser. And they decided, okay, let's just make this a, form, a, you know, a, a yeah. fully public known UI about colon third hyphen party. Now you can see the DLLs. And for DLLs that are not signed by Mozilla or Microsoft, and in this case, these were co-signed, mine were, you'll find a little, um, another option there, uh, a, a little red uh, cross-out symbol that allows you to deny that DLL's ability to inject itself. So you're able to turn off, to, to, to block the injection by DLL in order to see whether that might cure a problem that you're having. So they've also made it nicely diagnostic. Very in cool. user remediation is what that sounds like, right? Right, right. Of course, nobody would know it's there until, you know, you 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 you, you complained. Or, you know, certainly in, in forums with other knowledgeable Firefox users, they might right. say, oh, yeah, type about colon third hyphen party and you'll find out. And then, you know, turn that stuff off. You don't know, if, you know, what it's for. And remember, from a security standpoint, if something mm -hmm. looks suspicious, then definitely go explore what that is that's been injected into your browser's process space. You want to hear about the latest news happening in the tech world from the people who write the article, sometimes from the people who are actually making the news? Well, we got a show for you here at twit.tv. It's called Tech News Weekly. Me, Jason Howell, and my co-host, Micah Sargent, we talk with some amazing people each and every Thursday on Tech News Weekly. And we share a little bit of our own insights in each of us bringing a story of the week. That's at twit.tv slash TNW. Subscribe right now.